Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. You know, we hear it in the seats, even when we don't quite understand a new cinematic genre, we still have to acknowledge it and give it the respect it deserves. And, you know, if you're within the sound of my voice, that must mean you are in the seats with once more. As always, my name is Dave Voigt, and I'm the host of this podcast, where we sit down with a wide-ranging variety of industry professionals, we pick their brain about current projects, state of the industry, how they got started, and so very much more in a light and conversational fashion. And, you know, if you like how we do things around here... I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a stretch. I'm gonna assume that you do because, quite honestly, you're listening right now, uh, and that's why we love you. But uh, if you are listening right now, subscribe. Please hit that subscribe button. Give us the old five star rating, and subscribe uh, to the podcast because we're basically available over on all uh, major platforms uh, like Amazon, Apple, Spotify, Google, and plus we archive every single one of our episodes over at our In the Seats YouTube channel. So if you can give us a like and subscribe there as well, we would absolutely appreciate it. Also, uh, don't hesitate to check us out on social media. We're on the Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram, and the TikTok, and the Letterboxd for all sorts of fun updates. And finally, and I do dare say most importantly, please pay us a visit over at In the Seats, in the seats.ca for all the latest and greatest from the world of uh, television, film, basically the moving image at large. Because, you know, if we love to watch it and write about it and talk about it, guess what? We love it when you come by and read about it and listen about it. So please, pay us a visit. On this episode, boys and girls, we are diving into the brand newest sensation. Well, it's not that brand new, but it is sweeping the nation. Uh, if, in case you haven't noticed, the Christmas movie is everywhere. They're making a ton of them. These movies of the week are being pumped out like nobody's business, and people are lapping them up, and they love them. And uh, you know, if you're loving cinema, it's hard to argue with that. So we're 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 not uh, we're not here to judge. And actually, we kind of even jumped into the middle of it because we had a chance to uh, take a look at one made in our own backyard, and uh, is now playing up here on the Super Channel, and also available on various platforms to our friends to the south in the states. It is called Baking All the Way, and it's the story of a pastry chef from Chicago who finds herself in Wisconsin convincing a baker to give her his gingerbread recipe for her brand new cookbook. Uh, Yeah, it it, it hits all the right beats. It's it's sweet. It's funny. It does all that stuff. It's from uh, director Yannick Bisson, who uh, is a bit of a Canadian name in and of himself, who... uh, uh, you know, stars in the, and also directs episodes of the Murdoch Mysteries as the one only detective William Murdoch. But it's got some other familiar faces in it too, like uh, Corey Lee, uh, Michaela Besson, Jane Eastwood, uh, Deborah McGrath, Colin Mockery. Uh, from a from a CanCon standpoint, it's it's a fun, fun watch. But uh, in advance of it coming out. On the Super Channel, like I said, it's available now on the Super Channel for if you're up here in Canada. We had the chance to talk with the star of the film, uh, the one only Miss Corey Lee, who uh, gets to play the lead in this and uh, gets to push boundaries a little bit in a, in a genre like this that uh, has uh, has historically been very dominated uh, by people of white skin, and I mean, and she is uh, part Asian and. Uh, that's a good thing in and of itself by uh, being able to push uh, the boundaries of, you know, I guess what's expected in a genre like this. I mean, it has been a white space, but more and more so it, it's just becoming a, a people space, a person space, where we get to all enjoy Christmas because, you know, quite frankly, who doesn't love Christmas? And, you know, as far as these Christmas movies go, this is actually pretty good. It walks the line between being overly saccharine and sweet, but also... Uh, has a really nice story, and it's one of those ones that'll uh, sort of warm the cockles of your heart. But, uh, like I said, if you have the Super Channel up here in Canada, I do recommend you go check out Baking All the Way, which is available now. But first, do check out our talk with the star of the show, Miss Corey Lee, because between you and me, it's a pretty good one. But obviously, first off, just thank you so much for the time, and I mean, congratulations on the film. Thank you for having me. (laughs) I am very excited about it, so I love talking about it. Now, I mean, tell me how, I guess, walk me through sort of the days of getting the script and reading for it and getting the job. Oh, wow. Um, So I'd say the last four years, I've been really blessed to do a lot of MOWs, so Movies of the Week, if uh, people don't know the uh, abbreviation. And 
I love the genre. I love the space. It's just so fun and lighthearted and I'm a sucker for romantic movies. So pretty much as soon as I kind of got my first few MOWs, I just, my goal was to be a lead. Um, it means everything to me. You know, when I first started acting as a young girl, there wasn't as many opportunities for, you know, racially diverse ladies. So it was a dream come true. Um, I actually got offered the role and the first time I read the script, I definitely bawled crocodile tears. Um, I, I think the script is great. It's like, it's, it's a traditional, beautiful, heartwarming, cozy movie, but then there's definitely a little bit of a twist at the end that I think makes it really unique. So yeah. And then I was actually shooting another MOW when I found out I got it. So I was very much filled with lots of nerves because I just really wanted to make sure I had enough time to prepare because obviously when you're number one, there's a lot of lines and sure, if you yeah. don't know. Yeah. MOWs shoot very, very, very fast. Um, it's a whole different kind of ball game in terms of shooting. Like most MOWs shoot between 12 and 15 shoot days. So that's like very fast and furious. So, you know, you definitely have to know your stuff walking onto set. Like gone are the days. Like when I think back to like when I did my first kind of lead in a series, we were still shooting on film. We would get like three or four rehearsals before we even shot anything. So gone are the days where you can be working out your lines like on the day of shooting definitely so I was definitely really nervous and then I had about 10 days between that movie and then when we went to camera for baking all the way and yeah I pounded those lines like nobody's business because I was really nervous because you know I, I wanted I wanted to be amazing you know um I love the opportunity as I said I love the script so I just wanted Wanted to bring my A game and I knew um, for myself like just being really off book was going to be essential for like my performance on the day. Well and I mean I can imagine as well to being the lead I mean you've got to just be ready for those moments that maybe come that aren't expected because I mean especially when you get to share scenes with someone like Colin Mockery who just you know I can imagine could just go off on a tangent when he would want to uh, can be a little intimidating I mean for you how important is it I mean especially in these MODs because I mean it almost feels like independent film in many ways because like you're just you're just going you're shooting and you're going I mean yeah. How important is it to really just have sort of the prep down and sort of be completely invested in the moment when you're shooting these things? I mean, the cast is stacked with like Canadian royalty. It For really sure. is. Uh, I was definitely intimidated. I was really nervous my first day. Um, actually... The first scene that I ever shot for the movie is one of the final scenes and I have to cry. And I was so nervous because, and it was with Deb who honestly, like I knew of her before, but like she is just as amazing and as funny as Colin. And the fact that they got to like play off each other and they're married in real life, like it was so magical. Um, yeah, my first scene was with Deb and I had to cry and it was definitely a struggle because I was just so nervous and like I was trying to muster up all the sad emotions and it was definitely difficult. But yeah, it was a pleasure acting with everyone in the movie. Colin is such a joy. I'm like, I was a fan before, but like I'm a bigger fan now. I definitely cried uh, happy, hilarious tears in some of his coverage because uh, I don't know how these like comedians do it. They just like, he was riffing off, saying all kinds of crazy <laughs> things. Like every take was like different. And like, I'm more of a traditional actor, I guess, in that sense. Like I say my lines as they're written and he was just going off and oh my gosh. And I actually just saw the movie for the first time. And I'm so happy that they kept some of his ad libs in because kind of, again, traditionally in the MOW space, they try and keep it, you know, safer. And they definitely kept in a few things that will make 
me laugh out loud. Well, and I mean, something I really appreciated about this is because I mean, like you said, in the MO, MOW space, like there's, it's going to hit the beats. It's going to, it's going to stay in its lane kind of thing, but it really allowed your character, like in both your characters, especially with the romance angle to, to sort of be awkward and to sort of be uncertain. And I mean, I don't think I've seen that. Usually it was like, you know, somebody comes in and sweeps the other one off their feet and yada, yada, yada. This allowed for sort of that, that human awkwardness, which, which I kind of appreciated. And I mean, for you coming on to a set like this is it is that easy to manufacture or is that kind of hard to sort of because you're generating a, a real emotion you're not sort of hitting the beat of you know of the romance you're, you're you're awkwardly sort of stepping into the deep end of it i mean again as i said yannick is just like such a canadian icon that i was so nervous too like i was like oh my gosh i get to kiss yannick <laughs> like it's so like my my little my brain couldn't compute when I first found out like who's gonna be in the movie and obviously like reading the script. So yeah, it was definitely intimidating and he's just such a joy. And it was it was actually my first time working with a lead actor that also directed. So that was really interesting too because like I could see how he was when he was just directing and then I could see how he was when he was like just acting and then there was some beats in between where I could see he was like acting and directing at the same time so that was interesting like sometimes halfway through the take I, I wanted to just say like just give me the note like because I could see his eyes thinking like oh, okay next time we do this take you know I'll tell Corey to do this and this so yeah it was definitely it was yeah it was so crazy and just a dream come true in so many ways. Now, I mean, I'm curious for you because, I mean, obviously, especially here in Southern Ontario, uh, the MOW has almost become its own little bubble and its own little sort of industry culture inside itself. And how important do you think it has been for how much these things have popped up, especially for us in Ontario with more people working and more people shooting and just sort of getting opportunities like this. I mean, the MOW space has really exploded and expanded and evolved in so many beautiful ways. I could talk literally for hours about this one question, but um, so we shot the movie in Hamilton and Hamilton is really like a hotbed for MOWs. Like I would say a good majority of MOWs shoot in Hamilton. Hamilton or North Bay or Ottawa. And I've, you know, blessed, I've been blessed to shoot in all three locations. And it's just a beautiful space because as I said, it's quick turnaround. They can like make them happen, you know, literally within like essentially a month. Um, and what's um, even more fantastic is they were kind of the first things to come back when we got greenlit to shoot again in COVID. Right. Because it was, it was, smaller crews smaller budgets not a lot of actors because there was so many like covid rules so the first thing i shot right out of covid literally like the the week things got green lit and like to be honest in the first lockdown i didn't know what was going to happen with my life or my career but the first thing i ever shot right out at the gate um was an mow in hamilton um so it's just it was a blessing you know what i mean like i was so happy just to be working again and i as i have already touched on i i love the space and yeah mows are like a beast of their own like when you think 10 years ago like there was kind of only a couple movers and shakers in the space in terms of like networks now there's so many i don't want to list them off but like there's so many, like you think now when you like even Google like new Christmas movies, mm. like this year, like there's so many more channels and networks making them happen, which again is more opportunities and more work. And like, I just love working. Like I love it. It's literally what makes me the happiest and like what fills me with purpose. So I'm just, yeah, I'm just very happy that, you know, Ontario has the space of MOWs because it is there's they're constantly happening they're constantly being made and like I just want to be in all of them <laughs> now I mean I'm curious I mean this is a silly question but it's one I always like to ask can, can you think back to the younger days was there something that you saw that had you know the light bulb go off for a young Corey that made you want to get into this business like a performance or a movie anything like that oh my gosh again I feel like I could talk for so long about this subject so I have a kind of an untraditional acting start you know I started in music mm. um and acting really kind of found me and music was always like my main 
thing for many, many, many years. So I, you know, I was inspired by triple threats, you know, like the Aaliyahs, the JLo's, the like Beyonce. These are definitely like my, you know, inspirations. But being half Asian, um, you know, in the MOW space, you know, back when I first started acting, like there wasn't any, you know. So I specifically remember, and it was the same year, I saw my first half Asian lead in a movie, and it was The Crow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Going back. Do it. Going back. Yeah. Yeah. And it literally was a light bulb bulb moment for me because my first acting agent that had scouted me when I was literally a child told me, you know, I wouldn't be going for leads. You know, there wasn't the same type of opportunities for Mm. people that looked like me. So when I saw Brandon Lee lead of a movie, my brain was like, because it's such a beautiful thing to see someone that looks like you doing what you thought wouldn't happen. It's yeah. So that year, Brandon Lee uh, had did the crow. And here's a nice Canadian connection because I was doing music at the same time. Uh, Moist came out. Oh, OK. Again, All right. going, back, going back, baby. <laughs> and obviously, uh, David Usher, half Asian. Yeah. lead singer of a band a rock band at that my brain was like i can do anything so yeah those are my big light bulb moments for music and acting david usher and brandon lee i actually went and even visited brandon lee's grave in seattle that was super cool wow wow now i mean that's amazing and i mean i love that because i mean i'm curious because Obviously, like you said, you know, you are half Asian. And when people think of the MOW space, like, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll put it out there. People think of it as a very white space. But well, I traditionally love... Traditionally, it was. Yeah, no, no. Traditionally, it was. Yeah. How do you think uh, the movie of the week space is, is starting to push sort of those boundaries and to make itself more diverse? I mean, the world is changing. Yeah. The world is changing. Are we there yet? No. But... So when Hallmark uh, appointed their new CEO, it was a beautiful a black woman, which I think has really helped turn the tide in a lot of diversity. Um, and it's just, you know, they're evolving with the times. It really, it really is. And, you know, when I even think back to my music career, when I first started uh, trying to get a record deal, you know, when I was a teenager in Vancouver, doing urban music literally all the labels i sent packages to because that's what you did right. back in the early 2000s you were looking for a record deal literally all of them were like we don't know what to do with an asian that sings r&b from vancouver that's never happened and now what's so amazing is that there's a lot of urban music coming out of vancouver and there's a lot of asians like we ha- we have evolved as i said it's just slow and you know we're not there yet but but we're, we're coming. We're coming. No, I mean, I'm curious. As someone who's in the middle of the space, how do you see the the movie of the week, you know, environment sort of expanding? Because, I mean, especially here with what we've been shooting, it seems to be Christmas movies. Like, Christmas movies has been the cottage country. But, I mean, how do you think it can push further beyond sort of that sort of genre? I mean, honestly, even when I think about all the MOWs I've done in the last two years, like, scripts are evolving, you know, the comedies are evolving, the writing's evolving, diversity is, you know, a lot more commonplace so you know it's coming it really really is like before 10 years ago like you couldn't even say the word divorce right in mow you couldn't even show an alcoholic beverage like this is how wow safe yeah this is how safe the space was many years ago right so like i said just like with everything it is evolving just like anything it takes time but i am here i am here for the (laughs) the (laughs) Evolving MOW space, you know, I I really appreciate when, you know, I book roles in the MOW space or any space where it's not even about my ethnicity, you know, because, yeah. you know, especially in Canada, you know, there's just so many amazing exactly. people exactly. doing all of them, doing everything. So why does it have to be that I'm Asian, you know, because there were definitely like stereotypes of, you know, ethnic backgrounds in casting and they're still there you know asians they're either smart or they're sexy 
So guess who's been a doctor a lot? Guess who's been a lady of the night a lot? Like I'm either smart, so I'm telling people what to do, or I'm exotic because that's how, you know, casting used to always view being Asian, especially being half Asian too. My favorite comment ever, you'll love this, going for an Asian role. Oh yeah, she's not Asian enough. And I'm like, well, I am half. What do you want from me? I'm just being myself. So yeah, so we, we, the MOW space is great because as, yeah, like even with baking all the way, like I, it, it never said, you know, they weren't, I don't, they weren't looking for. No, it was never an issue. Or, yeah. you know, it was never a, a racially diverse situation. Like they never even talk about her ethnicity. The one kind of like little thing I wanted to add, and they obviously were very on board when I'm looking at photos of my mother, that's my real mother. Really? Wow. So, that's yeah, fantastic. yeah. So, yeah, and so obviously the the viewer will will be able to understand that you know my mother is Chinese, or so I was very happy um, to put that in because you know that's just who I am. You know, my father is German, my mother is Chinese. So for sure, yeah. And I mean, I think that's what I appreciated about this film because I mean, while it obviously hits the very cute beats and has those you know fantastic moments, it felt genuine. It felt honest it felt earned as opposed to sort of manufactured and i think that's really what's going to help this movie sort of stand uh, out from the pack and i mean i think you did a great job in it and just again thank you so much for the time today and congrats on the film thank you so much everyone go watch baking all the way coming super channel Same absolutely channel. and don't forget to to visit our friends over at bay street video for all your dvd blu-ray rental or purchasing needs this summer as they are still open for curbside and some mailing delivery as well over at 1172 bay street toronto ontario canada you can give them a call at 416-964-9088 that's 416-964-9088 or send them an email at baystreetvideoto at gmail.com for any of your dvd and blu-ray needs <laughs>